with all of the feelings I have against these people that have been uh, against justice, fair play, equality, and, and the freedoms as we know it. If I offended them by calling them a white cracker, for that I apologize. For the rest of it, there's a lot that has to be done here. And I, I never, with the names I've been called, <laughs> I never really put cracker in that category. All right. Well, anyway, that's Charles Rangel giving a mockingly, half-heartedly, uh, you know, half-heartedly apologizing to the Tea Party for calling them white crackers. We'll come back to that. But first, before we get back to the panel, I just want to remind you about the uh, great book by Newsmax contributor and political analyst Dick Morris. You know it. It's called Power Grab, Obama's Dangerous Plan for a One-Party Nation. And uh, I urge you to go get your copy if you haven't done so. It's a Amazon number one bestseller has been now for about two months. Go to powergrab411.com. That's powergrab411.com and get your copy. All right. The panel uh, rejoins us, uh, host of the Roger Hedgecock syndicated radio show, uh, Roger Hedgecock, and Newsmax contributor and host of The Right Side on Newsmax TV, Armstrong Williams. All right, Armstrong, um, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I don't know. I, I'd like to think Charles Rangel's senile, but uh, I know better. He makes these outrageous statements all the time and has done it for years. Well, uh, he, he should take <laughs> comfort in the fact that he's gotten a pass for making these comments for so many years. Uh, had this been someone who's a conservative making relatively the same comment in a very racist way, about blacks, it, was just, it would have been an international story. The media gives him a pass. It's inexcusable. He should be reprimanded, reprimanded by the Senate, um, so it will go on his record. He thinks it's cutesy. Uh, he thinks it's laughable. And the sad news is I'm sure when he's off the air in, in private, see, there are a lot of people go walk up to him in glad hand and give him a pat on the back, telling him that he's saying exactly what he want, that, that they want to say. And he thinks he's old enough and gray enough to say and to get, get away with it. Fortunately, his breed is a dying, dying dinosaur. There's no place for that, especially yeah. for an elected official and a member of Congress. Yeah, and Roger, you know, uh, uh, just a sidebar, I think Mark Lamont Hill, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, in my opinion, if uh, when the camera was off, he was practically slapping him on the back when the camera was on. But, um, you know, he, it, it is amazing. I mean, aside from people, uh, folks like the three of us talking about this, um, you know, the media is silent on this. Of course they are, and of course they're going to give him a pass, and of course it's the same old media stuff. And by the way, the Tigers don't change their stripes. Uh, Armstrong's exactly right. Uh, <clears throat> Charlie Rangel's going to be Charlie Rangel till the day he dies. He's a buffoon. And on these kinds of subjects, he's a racist. And of course, it, he's got the skin color that says he can never be racist, so that's the way the liberal white media plays it. But look, here's the deal. The guy who didn't know that income coming in from his, uh, you know, his, his, his uh, real estate down in the, in the Caribbean was, was taxable, and yet he's making tax law in the Congress. He's become more than laughable. He's become, I think, a symbol of the dysfunction of liberal government. It isn't the dysfunction of government. It's the dysfunction of liberal government, and he, he personifies it. All right. Uh, let, let me move to the to the uh, agreement between uh, Obama or the you know proposed agreement between Obama and China on <laughs> ca carbon emissions. Uh, this is the kind of deal, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I guess you got to be a uh, the smartest man in the world to make. So China can keep doing what they're doing for the next uh, 15, 16 years, and then they promise they'll start behaving, or quote unquote, and getting better. Uh, at carbon emissions. But in the meantime, we have to immediately start reducing our already reduced carbon emissions, which is going to further uh, stifle business and, and expansion and raise our electric rates and energy rates. Uh, sounds like a good deal to me, doesn't it, Armstrong, to you? You know, I, I have to tell you, um, it's, it, is so, <laughs> it is so outrageous that he could go to ch uh, China and allow himself to 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 agree to such an agreement, knowing it's particularly the, the kind of issues that they have with, with this issue, especially for vehicles, and yet he can have one standard for China, and yet have another standard here in the United States, and to think that he could just come back here and would not be the laughing stock, it's almost embarrassing. We're still talking about the president of the United States, even though he's a lame duck president. Uh, I, I I just don't see how anybody on either side of the media can give him a pass on this. It was just a Ro Roger, 10 him. seconds, Roger. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Roger, 10 seconds. 
Well, absolutely. You've got a situation where the Chinese get a free pass till 2030. We start uh, downgrading our economy and living at a lower standard of living uh, by, by 2025. And that's supposed to be a great deal for the United States. This president is worse than a laughing <laughs> stock. This is we th he, we've got to get we've got to get rid of him. Guys, we're coming back. I, I am. Thank you, gentlemen.